Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Dave here with Gold Gamers, and today we're going to be looking at this PS4 that was dropped. So let's go over to the workbench and see what we can come up with. So today we have a PS4 Pro that failed from the entertainment system. And it came in like this. It came in with the top cover already broken off. As you could tell, there's like a loose plastic over here. This piece over here is loose. And the first thing I noticed when I grabbed this console that I'm going to have to go in and repair it's this antenna right here. Now, this antenna looks good, but this antenna is broken. So, this is definitely going to need to be replaced. Now, the thing that they said was stated in the paper that they said was wrong with it was the HDMI port, which is actually good because typically what I see what happens with these game consoles is, is that the APU processor on a game console will actually detach from the motherboard slightly to where are some of the solder balls underneath it were cracked. So it won't be fully connected down to the board and there will be no proper continuity between the APU and the board. So we will actually have to go in there, reball the APU, put it back together. So as you can tell, um, HDMI port is beat up bad. And you can see like four of the pins are touching. And I'm hoping that actually doesn't affect the actual HDMI IC, which sits right behind the PS4 Pro HDMI port. And if it did, then we'll have to replace it because sometimes when I see what happens if these pins touch, sometimes they'll actually blow out that IC. So let's go over here and let's just get it opened up and let's see what we can see down on this motherboard and see what we can come up with. Also, there's a small crack right here in this PSU, but shouldn't be too big of a deal. So let's get this open. So the thing about these PS4 Pros, I actually do a overhead meaning over top of the hdmi port replacement with my heat wand instead of using my heat gun because there are tiny components that sit right behind it and i'll actually show you guys on my microscope because i want you guys to beware of the small components especially the ones on the ps4 slims and also the PS4 fat models that has all matte black. The glossy black PS4 fats don't have components right under it, which is the best way to have it because when you have components right under it, a lot of times I see where people would try to go in here and repair these things themselves, would tear up the HDMI port, and then will also tear up these components right here. So let me bring my microscope over here. We're going to go under the micro, see what we could get. Your veers right here, Your there's veers, which veers is like kind of like steps, meaning that it goes through the motherboard onto the other side of the HDMI. And there's your components literally right here. That's why another reason why I keep the Kapton tape. Even when I do overhead, I want to make sure these components don't fall off because if they do, you're going to have to have to either go on a goose hunt looking for them, which is dang near impossible, or you're just going to have to go to another donor board and grab it. So your components all right here. You can see the other one right here. So that's why we want to make sure this is wrapped in Kapton tape so we can fully protect that. So let's get this motherboard clamped down and let's get this old HDMI port off of here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some regular clamps that you can get from Home Depot. So we have... Our HDMI port ready to get pulled out. I'm going to put my vac pump right next to it just to make sure we keep the fumes out the way. And we're going to take our heat wand. We're going to heat it up right above the HDMI port and get this thing off of here. So um, let's apply a little bit of flux to make sure this can flow off a little bit quicker and easy, especially since we have components right under it we want to make sure we have run into no issues so we're gonna hit that hit that and we're gonna hit these legs over here as well all right so let's get this port heated up
All right, so we're going to put a little bit more flux on it because now what we're going to do is we're going to have to take our solder iron and we're going to have to run across there and put all new solder across all four legs and the entire HDMI header. So let me let my solder iron heat up and we're going to start putting down fresh new solder on this. All right, so we're gonna hit hit these four legs real quick. We gotta make sure when we put our new HDMI port on here, the HDMI port actually stays. All four legs is completed. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the actual header itself and make sure we get solder on every single pad. All right, so we got fresh solder on every single pad. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my heat wand, heat above it again, and we're going to get this new HMI port put on there. Let's um, heat up this board. And we got the new HDMI port in there. And I kind of do it quick, but you want to make sure all legs are fully desoldered. And I got it on there. Then what I'm doing now is I'm actually doing a check to make sure all legs are in there correctly and that it's fully level. It's in there correctly, it's fully level. So now it's time for the fun part. It's time to solder down every single pin to the board. And this is always fun. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some more flux. Yes, more flux. And we are going to go one by one heating up. Now, I don't have my hackle tips in because for some odd reason, due to COVID-19, all solder tips are sold out for hackos. I don't know how that's possible, but it's what's going on right now. So I am going to have to use my big regular tip instead of my hackos, my small hackle tip. So um, let's get a little bit closer, get a better view. All right, so I had to put it at a little bit of an angle and we're gonna start off on the right side of the header and I'm gonna have to be a little bit careful hopefully I can be careful and individually solder everything down with this tip and this is going to be tricky so what I do is I hit the front of the pin right on the pad then I slide the solder iron along the pin to ensure that this pin is fully soldered down and all the solder is fully flowed onto each pin
All right, so let's take our toothbrush with IPA on it. Let's clean off this header. Double check all of our pins to make sure we got down every pin soldered. Super hard to tell when you got a bunch of flux covering all pins and you can't see. So let's get that off there. So we have that completed. Every pin seems good. I'm just going to continue to clean off this HDMI port. And what I'm going to do is I'm also going to take my air compressor and make sure everything gets blown out of there, all debris. And plus, I need to blow out this motherboard anyways because it all needs a cleaning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right back to you guys. I'm going to clean up this motherboard, clean up the case and everything. And then we're going to put it back together and see how this bad baby works. So I'll be right back. All right. So we have everything hooked up. Um, I have that Wi-Fi antenna placed. I had to also replace the hard drive inside of it because the hard drive was defective and also put a new HDMI port inside of this console. So we fixed three issues on a console, but let's get it hooked up and let's see how it works for us now. All right, so we have the PlayStation logo, meaning the HDMI port is good and I'm gonna do a wiggle test. Wiggle test did pass, meaning that the HDMI port is held in place correctly. And let's do a signal test as we got a new antenna on there. Let's see. All right, so it has a good distance on the controller. Let's make sure the Wi-Fi actually has a good connectivity signal to make sure that antenna and everything else is good on it. So we're going to click on use Wi-Fi, make sure the Wi-Fi works correctly. And the Wi-Fi is working beautiful. It's uh, finding all the nearby nearest signals. So we are good. So now we have a fully functioning PS4 Pro with a brand new HDMI port, hard drive, and Wi-Fi antenna. So we are good to go with this one. So that is it for today's video, guys. If you guys did find this video helpful, make sure you go ahead and smash that like button. Also subscribe to the channel if you are brand new and you want to see how, more how-to videos on these game console repairs. And also, if you have any questions about this repair, go ahead and put your comments below. Or if you want to see something specific, put your comments below as well. And I'll make sure I'll get around to it. But besides that, thanks a lot for watching this channel. And you guys have a good day. I'm out.